We're here at Texas A&M University in College Station, Texas, at the statue of Lawrence Sullivan Sol Ross to announce Episode 6 of the Texas Generals, presented by the Texas Division of the Sons of Confederate Veterans. I'm Johnny Anderson. In this episode, we'll profile Sol Ross, an Indian fighter, Confederate general, the governor of the state of Texas, and the president of Texas Agricultural Mechanical College, now Texas A&M University. We hope you enjoy this episode, and if you do, be sure and give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. The story of Lawrence Sullivan Ross begins on September the 27th, 1838, in Bentonsport, Iowa, a village on the Des Moines River where he was born to Shapley Ross and Catherine Fulkerson Ross, the daughter of a Missouri legislator. When Saul was barely a year old, the family left Iowa for Texas, settling in Milam County, eventually ending up here at Nashville on the Brazos, now just a memorial on the side of the road, but then the county seat of the Milam District where Shapley became a Texas Ranger in Jack Hayes Ranger Company. In 1845, the family relocated to Austin so Ross and his siblings could attend school, and in 1849, they relocated again to Waco, about 60 miles upstream from here, where Shapley became the postmaster, built the first hotel, and ran a ferry business on the Brazos. In 1856, at the age of 18, Saul entered Baylor University, then located in Independence, Texas. There he finished the two-year program in one year and then decided to move to Florence, Alabama and attend Wesleyan University. During the summer of 1858, Ross returned to Texas and went to the Brazos Indian Reserve. There he was named captain and led a force of 135 warriors along with Major Earl Van Dorn's 225 troops of the 2nd Cavalry on an expedition to capture Comanche Chief Buffalo Hump. Scouts found the Comanches, including Buffalo Hump, camped outside a Wichita village in Indian Territory. After a five-hour battle, the Comanches were subdued, but Buffalo Hump somehow escaped. The troops did rescue a little white girl that had been captured on one of the Indian raids. Ross, however, was seriously wounded by an arrow and a 58 caliber bullet fired by a Comanche brave Mohi who Ross had known from childhood. General Winfield Scott learned of Ross's role and offered him a direct commission in the Army, but Ross declined, opting to finish his education. The following year, Ross graduated from Wesleyan with a Bachelor of Arts and returned to Texas. Once there, he discovered that no one had been able to trace the family of the young girl rescued during the Wichita Village fight. He adopted the child and named her Lizzie Ross in honor of his new fiancée, Lizzie Tinsley. In early 1860, Comanche Chief Peter Nakona led a raid through Parker County, which was named after his wife, Cynthia Ann Parker, who had been captured by the Indians when she was nine years old, raised as a Comanche, and was now the wife of the chief. After the raid, Nakona and his braves returned to the sandstone bluffs of Pease River, where he believed he would be safe. Governor Sam Houston had commissioned now Ranger Captain Sol Ross to raise a company of 60 rangers based at Fort Belknap to stop the Indian raids. After hearing of the Parker County raids, Ross began scouting for the Indians. He found them on the Peace River and at daybreak on December the 18th, 1860, Ross and 40 of his rangers attacked, surprising the Comanches. Stories differ about the death of Peter Nakona. Ross's own report says that he and another ranger pursued the fleeing Nakona and Cynthia Ann Parker for over a mile when shots were fired and Nakona killed. Cynthia Ann Parker was returned to Fort Belknap. Mourning the loss of her daughter, who was rescued with her to pneumonia in 1864, and her son, Cynthia Ann Parker starved herself to death. Ironically, both of her sons had escaped Peace River, the oldest becoming the famed chief, Quanta Parker. When Texas seceded from the Union in February of 1861, Sol joined his brother Peter's new infantry company, but Governor Edward Clark asked Ross to go to Indian Territory and negotiate agreements with the Indians on behalf of the Confederacy. On May the 28th, 1861, Sol would marry Elizabeth Dorothy Tinsley. Together, they would have eight children, six of which would reach adulthood. 
Having returned from Indian Territory in August of 1861, Ross left Lizzie with her parents and with his brother left for Missouri with what was now the 6th Texas Cavalry. Ross was elected to the rank of Major and led several successful scouting missions for Ben McCullough, who will be profiled in a future edition of the Texas Generals. On March 7th and 8th of 1862, he fought in the unsuccessful Battle of Pea Ridge, after which the Six was dismounted and fought in the First and Second Battles of Corinth. Ross commanded a brigade at the Battle of Hatchies Bridge on October the 5th, 1862, where the Federals attempted to cross the river with a frontal assault of 7,000 men. The battle lasted for three hours and Ross repulsed three separate assaults. The 6th was remounted shortly after, and Ross was selected to command a new cavalry brigade. He was promoted to Brigadier General on December the 21st, 1863. Ross and the Texans were sent to Georgia as part of fighting Joe Wheeler's Atlanta campaign. During the campaign, Union General William T. Sherman sent columns of cavalry to cut the Confederate supply lines south of Atlanta and to free the 32,000 Union prisoners of war at uh, Andersonville. So Ross was captured at the Battle of Brown's Mill on July the 30th, but fighting Joe counterattacked, taking over 1,200 prisoners and freeing 300 Confederates, including Sol Ross. The war ended with Ross on furlough back in Texas. After the war, Sol took up life as a farmer until he was elected sheriff of McLennan County in 1873. In 1875, he resigned and went back to farming until 1880 when he was elected to the Texas State Senate. In 1886, Ross ran for governor as a Democrat and was overwhelmingly elected. His administration focused on land reform, reducing tariffs, and regulating monopolies. He was re-elected and served until 1891 when he decided not to run for a third term, but instead became president of Texas Agricultural Mechanical College, now Texas A&M University. He was active in the veterans organization United Confederate Veterans, and served as the Texas Division Commander. On January the 3rd, 1898, Lawrence Sullivan Ross died at his home in College Station, Texas, probably of a heart attack, and is buried alongside his wife Lizzie in the Oakwood Cemetery in Waco, Texas. In 1917, the Sol Ross Normal College, now Sol Ross University, was founded in Alpine, Texas, and named after the former general and governor. And the Governor's Honor Guard today from Texas A&M University are still known as the Ross Volunteers.